Hi. Ever since I was a child, I've been interested in the moon and the stars and the universe. And over the past 10 years, I have used different cameras and telescopes to photograph nebulae, galaxies, and the moon. In this video, I want to show you what I do in the mountains of Santa Monica with one of my setups. It's an Orion Atlas. It's a large equatorial mount and a large telescope. Um, and hopefully for anybody who is interested in astronomy and astrophotography, it will be a nice introduction to the art. I'm going to put the big atlas mount on this tripod. And uh, first I'm going to... Um, this is the plate um, that holds the eyepieces. And it's also a spreader for the tripod. So what it does, it will keep the tripod perfectly spread in its maximum width. So. This is where the mount goes, so I'm going to grab the mount. It's very, very heavy. This is over 40 pounds. And I'm always happy when it's sitting straight. Um, the, the, this mount is what they call a German equatorial mount. And you need to, you need to adjust it so that this axis, which is called the right ascension axis, is pointed right at the north star, which is Polaris. So since I've been here many times, um, even when it's still light, I kind of know where it's going to be. Looking at the mountains, there is a little bump there, and that's where I point it. Um, so right now I got this kind of straight, and I need to make sure it's level. There is a little bulb, uh, like a little, what do you call them? A level thing over here. So we need to get that right in the middle. So this one is a little bit on the high side. So we're gonna go a little bit lower on this one. It doesn't have to be absolutely perfect, but it's nice when it's good. We're almost there. Maybe just a hair more. We're in business. I've been a photographer for 30 years and there is nothing more labor intensive than astrophotography. To take one good shot can take hours and hours and hours and hours and it's so much fun when it works out. So this is where the counterweight is going to go. So we're going to set up the counterweight. Uh, this axis is called the declination axis, which is perpendicular to the right ascension axis. Now I'm putting on the counterweight. I usually make sure that before anything, you want this to be really sturdy so that when the telescope is on there, that it won't fall. Because that's a thousand bucks in pieces. And this uh, um, particular mount is kind of well known. It's called, it's made by Orion. It's called the Atlas. And the Atlas, you know, holds a lot of weight. And it's also, next to being sturdy, it's very precise. Um, I'm, right now I'm connecting the handheld computer, which has a database of, I think, about 40,000 um, celestial objects. And after you have everything perfectly aligned, you can uh, get um, you can do, do a tour, and it will like the, the scope will automatically go to any place in the sky where you want it to go, which is pretty cool. This is just a strong battery. I also have an AC adapter, but for now I'm going to use this. This goes on the floor, and this one clicks in here as the DC 12 volt. Um, let's go like this. Since the whole thing will be moving, I want to make sure you got enough leeway because it's turning and twisting. Okay. So this is the telescope, or one of the telescopes. Um, this is an SCT, or a schmidt cassegrain telescope. Um, it has lenses as well as mirrors, and the advantage of that is that you have a fairly handsome scope. It's not that heavy, about 
13, 14 pounds that is catching a lot, a lot of light. This is always the tricky part because you want to make sure that it goes in the right way. And I prefer to do this in the daytime because at night it can be really, really hard. So then you fasten it. And now it's basically, it's, it, it's rock sturdy. I actually left the paper on because if I ever sell it, it will be worth more. Um, so it's a, a very classy telescope, which amazing optics. Um, it's the Celestron Edge HD with an opening of 8 inch, which is 20 centimeter. There is a mirror over here. The light comes in through a corrector lens. And then there is a little mirror over here that throws the light back to the eyepiece. And I will be here looking through the thing. I notice we're a little bit high so I won't be able to look through the eyepiece as it is right now um, let me see what I'm gonna do about that I can put everything much lower All right as well this is the reducer and it will piece goes in here it's called the hand grenade it's huge it's extremely high quality and it gives a very wide field so I'm um, actually I want to test uh, to see how wide the field is because haven't I haven't used this setup yet so that's gonna be kind of cool now we're gonna balance uh, um, the uh, other axis so we'll probably need two weights because one won't do it. I have to unscrew this one. And sometimes when you go to Mount Pinos, which is where a lot of astronomers come together, you have those giant telescopes where they have five or six counterweights to balance the telescope because less will not hold it. So let's see, this, this should definitely be enough with two. Um, now we need to get them in the right spot. So let's see how that works. So that's this one. And now we're still a little bit heavy on the telescope side, so this can come out further. Sun is setting pretty fast, so that's good. We'll have a nice clear night. Now we're almost perfect. Feel that. That's really good. Maybe a hair more this way. That's it. Balanced. So now we have pretty much everything balanced, um, which means that you can, th there, there's not going to be any extra force on the drives, on the motor drive. Let's see if this is still pretty balanced as well. That's also beautiful. So basically now without putting any force anywhere and having everything loose, you can point the scope to any part of the sky and you know, and you'll be in business. So um, what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna adjust the finder so that what I see through the telescope is gonna be also in the finder so I can use the finder so let me find a tree or something in the distance um, maybe the tree over there that can't be too bad um, let's see I'm put this back up a little bit like this now let's see what we see Okay. 
That's the focusing. Wow, it brings it so close, it's crazy. Um, I'm there right now. I want to go a little more that way. Right. Yeah, what I'm trying to do here, uh, this is the polar finder, and what I need to do is get Polaris exactly in the right position. And once I have Polaris exactly in the right position, then I can uh, start photographing. I'm going to do it with both. I got it. It's roughly aligned right now. And I use these different knobs. Ah, oh, this is not bad. I'd like to share the final results of this evening of shooting. Typically, uh, astrophotography is very time consuming. So we got two nice images. One of the Dumbbell Nebula, which is Messier 27. Uh, Messier was a French astronomer who made a list of uh, nebulous objects that he knew were not stars. He didn't know what they were. So that was in the 18th century, um, Charles Messier in France. So this is Messier number 27 the Dumbbell Nebula, which I shot with the large telescope that you saw. And then there's another one of the Pelican Nebula and the North American Nebula, which is in the constellation Cygnus, which I shot with a smaller telescope and a different, actually smaller mount. It's more like what they call wide field astrophotography. Both of them came out nice. So that's the result of one night of shooting. Two nice photographs. Thank you very much. I'm going to go to the next one.